everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is part two of this portrait drawing. In part one last week we drew the eyes, nose and the mouth and so this week I'm going to be focusing on her skin and also her hair and all of the little details and stuff like that. So if you missed the first part make sure you check that out. Also for you supporters over on Patreon I have got the rest of the real time clips for this so it adds up to about 7 hours of real time footage for you guys so you can follow along with me and listen to how I actually drew it all out. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to you guys that have supported me on Patreon so far. I can't believe that we're almost at our first goal over on there so thank you guys so much for your support. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm using an F grade pencil, which is a very light pencil, and I'm just using that to go over the whole of the skin, so everywhere where the skin is, I just lightly shaded over that, and then I'm just using a clean, soft tissue, and I use that to lightly blend out that area. So the key here is to not apply too much pressure, otherwise some of the pencil strokes will show through as you blend it out. So I'm just layering the pencil very gently. For those darker areas where there's more contour shading, I'm using a 4B pencil rather than the F, but I'm using the F4 where all of the light areas of the skin is. So I'm just gently building up the layers. Again, it doesn't really matter if your strokes are messy as long as they're really really light and you're not using much pressure then it'll be really easy to blend out using that tissue to get really soft blending. So again I'm just slowly building it up with that 4B, she's got a lot of contour shading on her cheek area, her cheekbones and also around her temples so I'm just making sure that I'm slowly building up those layers. You don't have to build it all up in one layer, you can slowly darken it up as you need to otherwise if you go too dark straight away then it'll be hard to erase it so I really like just building it up and slowly getting darker as I go. So as you can see that tissue works so well at softly blending out those areas. I just did another video as well explaining some different ways that you can blend and different tools for shading so I'll leave that up above if you want to check that out. So really I'm just doing the same thing but I'm just doing it very very slowly just shading those areas and then blending it out. You can also use a cotton bud for slightly smaller areas. And now I'm just blocking in the hairline so I know where the hair is. And once I get the hairline in, it also helps me judge how dark uh, the face needs to be because I'll have the contrast that I need to see. So I'll know how dark the hairline needs to be and it shows me that the face was a bit too light. So I now need to go and darken up those areas. That's why I really like blocking in the darkest areas first because it helps me judge all of my other values. So now I'm, I'm using that 4B pencil still but I'm using a bit more pressure and it's okay because I know that I need to go darker so I didn't apply too much pressure straight away but now that I know that I need to really darken up those areas I'm applying a bit more pressure. And then I just go in and I blend that out with the tissue. As you can see it's still really really smooth, it doesn't go uh, really messy even though I used a bit more pressure. And then once again, I'm just keep building up those dark shadows until they're as dark as they need to be. It really does matter how much pressure you're applying to that pencil because if you put too much pressure onto that pencil, then you can get a completely different result. It is very hard to make sure that you're getting the right amount of pressure and it does take a bit of practice to judge which grade pencil you need and that's why watching it in real time is a lot more beneficial because you can really see how I'm using that pencil and stuff like that. So I'm also working on shading under on her neck and that's a bit darker so I use more of the charcoal and I'm using the charcoal as well for the contours on her cheekbones. But I only used the charcoal once I knew that the 4B wasn't going to get the areas dark enough so I then switched over to the charcoal. Okay, so still building up those shadings. You can apply charcoal over the graphite as long as the graphite isn't like burnished into the 
paper. If it's really, really shiny, then you're not going to get the charcoal over the top. But if you're blending out with the tissue, then the charcoal tends to stick over the top of that. I don't recommend using graphite over the top of charcoal though. So now I want to block in all of her hair and to do that I am using a charcoal pencil and I'm using the 4B charcoal pencil. As you can see her hair in the reference photo is really really dark and there isn't too much like shading, it's quite a block colour and it's just a dark mass so I'm not worried too much about the direction that I'm going in. I'm still trying to follow the direction that her hair is naturally flowing in but in certain areas where it's really really dark I'm just blocking in that colour. I then go and lightly shade that out with the cotton bud and as you can see it lightens it up a bit but it does help um, mix all of the white grain with the charcoal and it does soften out quite a lot but I'll need to do a few layers to get it the darkness that I want it to be so again I'm going over with that same charcoal pencil and I'm just following the direction that the hair is going in. I'm not using circular motions, I'm using lines that are going in the direction that the hair would naturally fall in. And I'm also trying to integrate her hair into where her skin is using the hairline just so it's not a really harsh transition. There's obviously a very soft transition between her hair and her skin. I'm now just quickly blocking in and doing the ears. We'll need to be working a lot on the hairline later on and I'll also need to darken up the eyes and the eyebrows and all that sort of stuff. So now I'm just going in and adding another layer onto the hair. I'm just blocking it all in, you can see on the left side of her hair it's very much just one block colour so I didn't worry too much about doing the direction of the hair with that. It's quite important to focus on her hairline, the direction of the hair though because that is really important to focus on. So now just one last layer and for this I am using the 6B charcoal pencil. So this is the darkest charcoal pencil that I own. It's a really, really soft charcoal pencil. So you might have to keep sharpening it to make sure that it's sharp enough to get all the individual hairs. But as you can see, it just makes it so much darker and it makes it closer to the reference photo, which is what we want it to look like. And so I just went over all of that one last time to get it the correct darkness. And now I'm going to work on those flyaway hairs because at the moment her hair looks very uniformed. There's not many flyaway hairs which really break up all those clumps and it just looks very neat and tidy. Whereas in reality in her reference photo she does have a few little messy bits of hair flying around and that is going to make your hairstyle look a lot more natural and it will make it look more realistic. So to do that I'm using some of the lighter charcoal pencils and also graphite because if you're to use the really soft charcoal to do the little individual hairs then it will just look too fuzzy and you can't get your pencil sharp enough to do those if you're using a soft charcoal pencil. So now I'm actually using a carbon pencil and it's quite a hard carbon pencil and I'm just using that to add some of the hairs on the hairline. What I love about carbon pencils is that they also don't give shine but they get really dark results. I just added a little bit of shine to the hair by using an eraser and I just chopped the end of it to give it more of a precise clean edge. Okay so now I'm working on the eyebrows and the first thing that I did was I used the carbon pencil just to add some of those eye eyebrows, those little light ones on the top of her eyebrow and then I went in with the 6B and I just used that to really darken up the eyebrow. I'm also using it to darken up the darkest areas of the eyes just so that it matches the hair and it really pops out of the page. You want to have a good contrast when you're doing a portrait so you really want to make sure that you're getting your darks as dark as they need to be and your highlights as bright as they need to be. So it's important that you don't just think one area is finished, keep going back and keep darkening up areas and lightening up other areas until it all looks in balance and yeah, so everything is in the right contrast. 
So I'm just looking at the reference photo, spotting the darkest areas and just really darkening those up. And already you can see from those few subtle changes, it looks a lot more like the reference photo and it just pops out of the page so much more. So now I'm using that stick eraser and I'm just going to use that to pull up the highlights. So I'm just looking at the reference photo and looking at where the brightest highlights on the reference photo are. And so I'm using that eraser very, very lightly in circular motions to pull off some of the graphite. And then I use the tissue and I use the clean side to really blend it out so you don't see where those harsh eraser lines are. I also use a kneaded eraser for some of the smaller areas. So for example, the little highlights in the iris and on her lips. But you can see those last few minutes where I did her hairline and I darkened up her eyebrows and her eyes and now I've added the highlights, it really brings everything together. So even if you have been working on a drawing for a long time and you think it's not looking how you want it to, then you can really see how in a short period of time it can completely transform by adding those few final touches. So make sure you keep working at it and just keep spending a bit more time and just judge whether your contrast is right, see if you've got your darks dark enough and your highlights bright enough. Anyway guys, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you're new to my channel and you want to see more tutorials then feel free to hit that subscribe button and as always I'll leave a list of all the materials I use in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!